But while extolling the virtues of democracy, uh, may I uh, say it ironically uh, that India, India is perhaps uh, is a, a good contributor of child labor, um, say compared to China, uh, which is which is not a democracy. Uh, is it not ironic, sir? It's an irony, definitely, definitely. But when I, s when I was just uh, answering the previous question, yeah. I said that it is not the democracy in the governance. It is not only a kind of ritual democracy through elections. Right. And some people reach in the power, good or bad, all kind of yeah. people. So that is a kind of very ritual democracy, very conventional democracy. So under the garb of democracy, many things happen. But I am talking about the culture of democracy where everybody can raise the voice and can feel responsible to each other. Democracy brings about transparency in the society, but that is hardly seen even in the political outfits and systems. Even in the social organizations, NGOs, you can hardly see those kind of things. Yes. So that's why I'm emphasizing on the culture of democracy. Right, sir. So you, you, during your earlier discussions, you referred to do uh, obliquely about the uh, the uh, uh, fundamentalism and uh, like things. So in the uh, this. Child Labor, this uh, Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986, which has been recently amended, perhaps cabinet has approved and you have raised certain objections regarding the list of hazardous uh, prof uh, occupations. So, while you talked about fundamentalism, uh, in the child labor concept, uh, when someone is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, impeded in his growth, in the mental and physical growth, uh, that is uh, one way uh, the attributes of child labor. So here, when f this fundamentalism, we talk about these uh, occupations, eighteen occupations, and then fifty-five processes. Uh, just a fleeting thought, sir. Uh, can it also be the uh, the concept of child labor, whether this uh, indoctrination of the child, like what is done in the, he has just referred about Iraq and other countries, we have seen child jihadis, uh, this kind of thing. In the in the other end also, there might be in the right in the left uh, uh, in the leftist world also that may happen, that indoctrination of the child when he or she is able to understand the political philosophy, he is not able. Uh, is it also can be construed as, as a child labor? Let me underline one thing that childhood freedom yes, is the philosophy of my life. It is an ideology, it is my religion, it is my culture, it is my mission, childhood freedom. Every child is born as free child. Every child on the earth is born with certain human dignity. Because when a child is born, it is established that God is kind to us. And I always say that when a girl is born, when a daughter is born, the God smiles and says that I wanted to continue humanity the mankind, humankind. So, children are most precious. It is not just for talk shop in our way of life. We have to respect the childhood. Having said that, when it comes to some of those discussions, debates about the legal systems, I tell you that when I started, India did not have any law in 1981. So, it took me about, me and many people, I won't take all the credit for that. There were several individuals, organizations. We worked very closely. But I brought this issue that India should have a domestic law against child labor. In 1986, the law was enacted. It took us about six years. I remember that I was 
organizing sit-ins and dharnas and slogans with my wife Sumedha and my two three year old um, son uh, and later on my daughter was born in 1985. So we were being arrested by the police and thrown away from there with one simple demand, simple demand that India is the largest democracy in the world and it, it should have a law against child labor when so many judgments and orders have been passed by the Supreme Court of India, India should have its own law. You referred a number of laws in, but these laws were not implemented. Also there was no singular law. So finally in 1986 the law was enacted. That was a big law, that was a poor law we have never been satisfied. But it took us almost three decades for the amendment of this law. I have been doing every possible thing in terms of writing letters to every single parliament member, every single parliament member, not once but several times. I have personally met almost three, four hundred parliament members one to one as I was talking to you, convincing them, trying to tell them that we cannot get rid of many problems in my country until and unless child labor is totally eliminated, totally eradicated. Some of them slowly agreed. Finally, the amendment uh, is proposed and the amendment is now cleared by the cabinet. There are several interesting and progressive things. One is that all forms of child labor is prohibited up to the age of 14. Earlier only the hazardous forms of child labor were prohibited. That is one good step. The second good step that all hazardous forms of child labor is banned legally between the age of 15 and 18. That is also very progressive development. Now child labor is a cognizable offense, so police yes. has to act on it. It does not remain confined to the hands of uh, labor department and labor inspectors. Now police has to. The uh, the punishment is much more deterrent than before. The fines is fine is much more bigger. These things are positive, but there is gray area which we are trying to address. I have written a letter to the Prime Minister of India. I have spoken to. Uh, and returned to uh, the labor minister and met him and spoke to him and also many other ministers. So we are asking for two simple things. One is the child labor should be properly defined in the law. For many people it would be surprising that this law of 1986 is on child labor, but there was this there was no definition of child labor in the law as per se. And so is the new case. Child labor is not defined. What is child labor? The rest of the things are there, but what child labor is when the, the, the title of the, uh, the law is on child labor or about child labor. So that is a serious gap. In one of uh, Bachman Bachao's Andolan uh, petitions, the High Court of Delhi has defined child labor uh, last year in November 2014. So that they have defined child labor clearly, established the, 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 the chances of exploitation or employee-employee relationship directly or indirectly and so on. Anyway, so I have demanded that there should be clear definition of child labor so there is no ambiguity which was there in 86 law and which is there in the new suggested amendment. The second thing is about the hazardous forms of child labor. There are 18 occupations and 65 processes. They gradually added when uh, different medical committees and technical experts and committees have found that there are many things which are hazardous for the health of children. So they have added to it. So now we have this list, the list of prohibitive occupations and, uh, uh, and processes. I am demanding that it should not be compromised. There should not be any change in it at this stage. That should be the primary basis of defining the hazardous child labor so that the children would not be allowed to work of at any age 
at any place and there should be some sort of uh, provision for improvisation of this uh, this list so that sometimes the new occupations come they could also be added to it and so on so definition of child labor one and clarity about the hazardous occupations because this has been established after thorough and intense research and investigations and reports and surveys and so on so we cannot make compromise on the hazardous list which is prohibitive in the present law so it should continue in the next law uh, the uh, the next amendment as well and that is something which is very much needed to ensure that children must not be exploited and would not be forced to work in conditions which are not good for their physical and mental health that is not good for their education globally child labor is prohibited in many such things but when the children are learning something in the families and helping the families in their free time not at the cost of their health not in any kind of hazardous situations and occupations not under any compulsion or force not indirectly engaged by their uh, parents or family members who are working as subcontractors for a contractor because that is indirect mm -hmm. child labor these things are not allowed in most countries but learning and helping the families is something which is common everywhere in the world so we should not try to mix these two two things we have to clarify it that the children must not be forced to work in any conditions they must complete good quality education good quality education for all children that is must uh, there must not be any kind of um, excuse for that poverty is no excuse i would say or any kind of those things are no excuse all children must be ensured their fullest childhood education health care nutrition and all rights which are ancient in our constitution as well as in the un convention on the rights of the child and there are many other conventions and treaties which india is party to Thank you.